Pokemon Masters, Berkey Batobi here, and Nat Dexers get angry. There's no Pokedex in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Not at the start of the game anyway. There might be lots of Pokemon out there, but no one's recorded their data. And I know, I know, that's not what all you Nat Dexers were mad about. I'm only poking some fun, having a laugh. But the Pokedex it didn't exist in the time of Legends Arceus. You, as the player character, are going to make it. Being the first person to get out there on the field and document the Pokemon that you'll catch, find, and write the data about them. And there's no Pokenav, Poketch, or Pokegear in this era either, meaning you're not writing it digitally, you're writing it physically. And that this book from the opening, or the very, very opening, this book of the Sinnoh region, this probably is the Pokedex. I mean, what iconic image is there for a Pokemon trainer more than the Pokedex next to some Pokeballs? And here we have it, some Pokeballs next to an ancient book, the first ever Pokedex. And I know you're thinking, hang on, didn't Professor Oak create the original Pokedex? Yes, no, Professor Oak created the Kanto Pokedex. Perhaps Professor Oak was the first person to digitize the Pokedex, to create Dexter, who in the animated series has just sort of disappeared. And now we have like the Rotom Dex, a Pokedex that incorporates Rotom into it. So what was before the red Pokedex that we know and love? Before this and its many iterations with technology over the course of the series? Well, it was probably books. It was probably people drawing and writing about Pokemon. And here's, I guess, again, this is just gonna be one of those short videos, isn't it? Here's another one of those little mini theories for you. In the Pokemon movie, Pokemon Forever, a young Professor Oak from 40 years in the past has traveled to the future with Celebi and witnesses young Ash Ketchum using his Pokeballs and his Pokedex for the first time. At that time, Professor Oak has a totally different kind of Pokeball, one that uses a little cog that you turn and then it opens up. It looks like it's somewhere between a modern Pokeball and the Pokeballs that we see in Legends Arceus. But how was the modern Pokeball created? Well, the idea is that there, there is a paradox going on here, the bootstrap paradox, in which young Professor Oak sees Ash Ketchum using his Pokeball for the first time and goes, wow, what a cool idea for Pokeballs. When I return to the past, I should make that. Because we know that in his adventures, Oak was friends with Kurt, who was said to create the modern Pokeball before, I guess, Selfco started mass producing them. Maybe they bought the patent from Kurt who was still making them out of apricorns and said, hey, we can make those with machines. In fact, Oak and Kurt have this whole connection in the story to do with the GS ball. Perhaps the GS ball was like a prototype ball, which is why they can't get it open. That was a whole theory that I did ages ago and that there really is the Celebi from the fourth movie trapped inside there. But I digress. As a result of Kurt making the modern day Pokeball, it ultimately gets given to Ash when, he's a, when he begins his adventure. And then Ash meets a young Professor Oak who's traveled forward in time shows him the Pokeball, and then Young Oak goes, wow, that's a really cool idea. When I jump back in time, I should make that. Thus, it is a never-ending loop. Oak helped Kurt create the first ever Pokeball, perhaps that being the GS Ball, because he saw Pokeballs in the future, what they'd look like and how they'd work. And similarly, Professor Oak saw Ash's Pokedex. At the time, Professor Oak, then known as Sammy, was a Pokemon trainer, going about the Pokemon world and sketching the Pokemon that he saw, gathering information about them that way. Much like we see in the trailer for Legends Arceus. And then at some point in the movie, Ash goes, hey, that's kind of like a Pokedex. Sammy Oak is like, what's a Pokedex? And Ash shows him the Pokedex, to which Professor Oak then goes, huh, that's a cool idea. Gonna steal that one. And when Professor Oak goes back in time, Professor Oak goes, I'm gonna digitize that. We're gonna we're gonna make a Pokedex. Once again, meaning that the idea for the Pokedex sort of came from nowhere. It's created because it's created. It is the god in the machine, or the Arceus in the machine of the universe. Which might make sense, because I've also done another little theory about how Cyrus may have gone back in time and be the professor of this region. That's just another mini theory. But if it's true and Cyrus says, hey, you should make this thing called the Pokedex because people in the future have things called Pokedex, well, people 
in the future only have a thing called a Pokedex that's digitized because people used to draw them down because Cyrus told them to in the first place, which would again make it a part of this big paradox thing that just keeps on going round and round. But that's a spin-off side tangent theory. It just means that I guess that Pokedexes and Pokeballs are somehow tied to the very like fabric of reality that makes up the Pokemon world. They're just sort of fundamental. But the other cool thing about the creation of the Pokedex, and I really need a book that looks like this. I like I just need like a, a hundred notebooks that look like this. Is if this is version one, it's not gonna have the same entries that we see in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, for example. In Diamond and Pearl, we see how ancient pe pe people like revered Bronzong and that they petitioned it for rain in their local villages for bountiful harvests. But at the time of Pokemon Legends Arceus, well, these are ancient people. That Pokedex entry might explicitly say, hey, the people of the local village use this Pokemon to open up portals that bring rain. Or it might be less explicit. It might say, rumor has it that people from other villages can get this Pokemon to produce rain. And that that word of mouth changes it with every new iteration of the Pokedex. So we don't actually know how reliable a lot of the information is. All we know is that the information of the Pokedex is written upon time and time and time again by by Pokemon trainers. We do see this as well in Let's Go where both Red and uh, Blue. Blue mentions that the two of them when they travel around the Kanto region they had to make notes about the uh, Pokemon that they saw on paper because Oak hadn't made the Pokedex yet. What he's talking about is not the idea of Pokedexes, it is simply the digital version of the Pokedex. Because before that point, I guess it really was just books and drawings, and that's what they were alluding to in Let's Go. I am very much looking forward to reading all of the Pokedex entries from Legends Arceus because it's going to provide so much context. Heck, there's Pokedex entries that I'm really interested in from the Galar region, for example, about how in ancient times, Sylveon was known as the Dragon Slayer Pokemon or something like that, or Malamar helped change the history of a kingdom by using its evil powers. There was an ancient king that wore the helmet of an Agron. What if we meet these characters? What if we learn what the where these Pokedex entries came from? Anything and everything is possible. Let me know your thinkings in the comments. This is just a short little Pokemon theory, a little extra one for the week. Thank you all for watching, and of course, so high Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. A tremendous thank you to those of you who go above and beyond to support this channel financially, including those of you who are supporting me on Patreon. And a special shout out to the big patrons of this month, JD Gottlich, Michael Hornchew, and Matty Barr. As well as the Christum. Thank you.